Uh, so my talk is aptly titled, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, Can SAT Solvers Resolve Dependency Hell? <clears throat> um, so before we talk about what is dependency resolutions and all the fun they're in, um, we're going to add a quick disclaimer. Um, this, this presentation might contain some recursion, and if you don't know what recursion is, don't worry about it, because you have to understand recursion to understand recursion. Um, so before we talk about dependency management, we're first going to talk, oh, oh, let me move this thing, which is touching my chin. Okay, stay. First time we're one of these. So we're going to talk about, um, before we talk about dependency management, we're going to uh, do a crash course on the classic case of the P versus NP debate in computer science. Um, you may have seen this referenced in um, an episode of The Simpsons or uh, Futurama. As you can see, both have very differing opinions about P versus NP. Um, you may have also recognized it as one of the millennial pro mo millennium problems, millennial problems or something else. Um, uh, and you, you can think of these millennium problems as essentially bug bounties that um, have been set by the Clay Mathematics Institute of Cambridge. So they award $1 million um, to, for a solution for each of these problems, um, one of which you may have noticed in the previous slide has been um, already solved. So the point, I'm not going to try and pronounce that conjecture. Um, was, was solved sometime a couple years ago, and what's interesting is that he didn't even um, accept the the reward the award. He he declined, saying it was mostly derivative work off um, Euler and whatnot. But you know, Euler's got had enough credit for a lot of things, so I think you know he should kind of accept accept it. Um, in any case, so we're going to introduce some jargon. Um, P represents polynomial time, which is the set of problems that can be solved uh, in polynomial time. Um, NP represents non-deterministic polynomial time, which is the set of problems whose solutions can be verified in polynomial time. Um, so some examples, um, P includes problems such as solving a 3x3 three three Rubik's cube, um, arithmetic operations, um, uh, quick calculator stuff, um, whereas MP problems can include uh, uh, the traveling salesman problem, Sudoku puzzles, circuit design, uh, protein folding. Um, so if anyone um, can in, um, design a really good Sudoku puzzle, in theory, um, you can help cure cancer because we could apply that for protein um, folding. Um, and if you reduce these problems to <coughs> the decision problem of NP in a computability context, it becomes a class known as uh, NP complete, um, which is a fancy way of saying it's a bit more complex, but we still have the uh, capability to solve it and verify it. Um, so what does all this NP and NP completeness stuff have to do with dependency resolution? Um, Tur turns out, um, oops, sorry, for some turns out NP dependency resolution is an NP complete problem. And if you don't believe me, um, check out this uh, Twitter feed by Rux Cox. Uh, he was one of the, um, uh, the current maintainer of the Go mods, which is the Golang uh, package manager. Um, he did a lot of work with um, a name, uh, the previous maintainer of uh, GoDep, which was Sam Boyer. So they, they've, uh, Go has had seven versions of package managers so far, so I think they're finally getting it this time. Um, so consider the following. Um, uh, a package maintainer A depends on packages B and C, but both depend on two different versions of package D. What do you do? So this is colloquially referred to as the uh, diamond de dependency problem, uh, or more generally known as dependency hell. So if you've ever um, pip installed or npm installed or name a package manager installed something, and for some reason um, the, you've had two conflicting uh, third, uh, 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 packages that required a common package where you can only 
uh, you had to break one in order to make the other work, this is a situation of the dynamic dependency problem or dependency hell. Um, but wait, we have the technology. Um, we can solve NP-complete problems. We've listed a few, actually. Um, some NP-complete problems have been reduced to these problem spaces. Um, circuit set, SAT, uh, more generally, uh, Boolean satisfiability, or SAT for short. So being able to uh, um, uh, resolve these down to a true or false statement, um, we can essentially model all Sudoku puzzles as Boolean satisfiability problems. Um, but naturally, the flaw in any computer system is human, right? SAT solvers are amazing at doing what they do, but they're still constrained. Um, they can only work within the constraints we give them, and who sets those constraints? We do, right? The developers, the users. So we've developed some pra practices to try and kind of mitigate these and alleviate these problems. Um, this, this might be a common theme amongst all package managers, or at least the pattern that we're kind of striving toward. Um, so you have your project code. That's where you're creating, maybe you're, you're creating a new library, or you're just starting a new Python project, or Node, or Rust, or p insert pack, uh, programming language. Um, and then you specify something called a manifest file. And that is the minimum, uh, dependencies and the minimum versions that you need for your specific project. And then somewhere between that is created a lock file, which uh, is, a f is a complete list of all the dependencies you need to install. That's where the Sudoku puzzle comes in to figure out, OK, of the dependencies that you didn't specify and you didn't really uh, say which version you might want to install, okay, I'm going to do my best guess and figure out which one I should install, and uh, there go your lock files. So the reason it takes so long the first time you uh, say npm init a project is, is because um, it's generating that lock file. So it's essentially trying to solve a pseudo puzzle just so you have that bare bones lock file. Um, and of course, from the lock file, um, you now have the exact list of uh, packages and dependency versions that you need to install into uh, your, t your vendor directory, um, however that's, that's cached on your system. <clears throat> um, but sometimes someone always ends up uh, getting bit, right? Um, either the users or the developers. Um, and there's fair sides, fair arguments for either side as to who we should put the burden on, but um, I'm personally of the opinion that we should all kind of do our part because um, this, this is, uh, shall I say, an MP complete problem. Um, so what are some TLDRs about what we can be doing as a community? Um, I've listed a few. Um, point one, commit your lock files, do not delete them. Um, your lock files are what uh, allow you to give full reproducibility of a project whenever you start a project. Um, if you delete your lock files, you are effectively saying uh, whatever I install tomorrow could be a completely different version of the things I installed yesterday. Um, the other thing is document your APIs and use Semver. Um, I think those two go hand in hand because the purpose of Semver is to uh, is a social contract to other people who are using your library that you've made a change in your API. And if you haven't used Semver, um, go check out semver.org. They have um, a, a pretty bland yet a comprehensive web page for how the system works. Um, the other thing is com communicate with your, your library authors. Maybe one of their dependencies goes out of date. Maybe they have some security patch or security vulnerability that needs updating. Um, and then the fourth is talk to your package management developers because, you know, this, this, is, this is a difficult problem. Um, so we, I think we all need to play our part. Um, so this was more or less a pretty short and sweet talk, but I want to leave with two quotes before I end. First being, without requirements or design, programming is the art of adding bugs to an empty text file. 
And last but not least is Hiram's law. With sufficient number of users of an API, it does not matter what you promise in the contract. All observable behaviors of your system will uh, be depended by some, uh, somebody. So, yeah, thank you. Obligatory XKC yeah. um, Any questions? Yeah. So I, I think the question was, do I know of any package managers that have that have had to solve the diamond dependency problem? Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, Golang. So Golang was an interesting case because their uh, they, their language was designed such that um, if they ran into a situation of the diamond dependency problem where the their third party dependency uh, was not one dependency, then it just will not compile. Um, and I think that was a design choice because the uh, the intent was perhaps to serve microservices, and if you're building a microservice, maybe your binary shouldn't have to be that large anyway. Um, but that that has, um, to some extent, uh, I would say, created a hard problem for the package. Uh, management developers for the Go, Go team because they've had seven revisions of their package manager, and I think they're finally getting it right. But it's it's been an iterative process to actually like solve this solve this problem. What do you think about the project on how like because um, I've seen it happen in some projects on how they basically alias or like map a version in so that you're like okay mm -hmm. so that's fine this library will use 1.9. This library will use 2.2, and it just does whatever it needs to do to modify you know, the linking. So it's like, yeah. okay, you're using your old version that you need, you're using the new version that you need. Yep, and that's exactly what NPM does, right? Is every dependency that uh, has similar but slightly different versions, they just kind of fork their own uh, little node modules uh, folder, and then everything's just. Uh, uh, turtles on top of turtles, and then the thing is all, all, all is good. But um, the, I, they've, they've also, that's also kind of hurt them in some regards, right? Because you have a very large project because you have this really ridiculously large known modules folder. Um, and I think that's where Yarn kind of stepped in and, and said, hey, um, you two are using the exact same dependencies in the same version. Maybe you can both uh, point to the same the same folder. Um, so there's this deduplicate uh, deduplication effort going on, where um, if you have duplicated um, dependencies, let's just use the same one. Um, there's some debate as to whether that should be a flag option, whether you want to enable or not. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's part of the the conversation of how how should we design these systems. <laughs>